All right, welcome. I'd like to show you today how uh, to do the composition of uh, two functions. Now, we talked about a, a video last time about uh, you know evaluating functions, and that's very similar to you know what we're going to be doing today. Composition of functions is pretty much taking one function and plugging it in for another function. You remember the whole premise of what functions are? We have an input and an output, and you know we have a rule that helps us decide what it is. So. You know, we have f of x, that x is our input, and whatever we plug in, we weren't going to find the value of our function at that uh, term. Well, what if we say, you know, find the value of my function at 3? Well, what did we do for the 3? We took the 3 and we plugged it into all of our value, all of our x's in our rule, or whatever our variable was, to find the value of the function at that term. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you real quickly. Let's say we have a function f of x equals x plus 2, right? All we did is if I want to evaluate this for like negative 3, what I did was I plugged negative 3 in for my input, and then I found the value of my function. So I could say the value of my function at, at, at negative 3 is equal to 1. Well, <clears throat> what, we're, what we've done now with composition of functions it's, pretty, it's the, pretty much the exact same thing, but now rather what we're going to do is instead of plugging in a number, what we're going to do is we're actually going to plug in another function. Now, I know sometimes you're like, whoa, that's way too confusing, uh, but let's just give it a shot because remember functions, all they are is certain types of rules. Now, there's rules that have special, that it has a special relationship, but it really is it's just a rule or an equation that we're going to plug into our other function. So it goes along with our same operations of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug one function into the other function and then you know, simplify. Now on for evaluating, I did show you guys how to um, find the value after you add or subtract. And that's the same thing. What they're saying is once I evaluate a function, I want you to find the value or once you compose a function, I want you to find the value of your answer. So that's why you're going to have uh, f of 2. But let's look at Real quick, the, how we write composition of functions. Um, composition of functions comes to two things. One, we kind of say the f of g. It's a little circle. It's not the same size as an o, but a lot of times you don't remember it, we say fog. And what that means is you're going to take your g of x function and plug it into your f of x function. For here, there's no l. I don't know why I like to say golf, but it's just an easy reminder of golf and fog. And again, to a golf and fog, you're going to take your f of x function and plug it into your g of x function. So let's go and take a look at some examples. I'm going to do this example first, and then I'll move back to work on that example. So if I want to take the f, the f of g of x, what that means is I'm going to take my g of x function and plug it into my f of x function. So it's going to look something like this. For this one, I'll show you the slow hand version, and then for that one, I'll kind of work a little bit quicker. So I want to find f of g of x. So I'm going to plug g of x into f. So that's going to look something like, instead of squaring x, I'm now going to square the g of x function plus 1. Well, what does g of x even mean? Oh, they gave it to us. g of x is 2x minus 1. OK, then I can square this. I'm just going to do a little bit quicker uh, mental math. So this is going to give me 4x squared uh, minus 4x and then plus 1, plus 1. Combine all my like terms. Plus 2, so we know that f of g of x is equal to there. Now your book might write it like this or it might write it like that. It just kind of depends on what you're used to, but you need to understand at least what it's going to mean. So the next one, g of f of x. Now I'm going to take my f of x function and plug it into my g of x function. So I can show you the same way I did here, but I don't know. I think it's kind of confusing looking at it that way sometimes. So I'm just going to plug whatever my g of x function is, x squared plus 1, and I'm going to plug it in for that x. So therefore I have g of f of x equals 2, well, not times x anymore, but x squared plus 1. Then minus 3 is at the end. So now I do 2 times x squared, which is going to give me 2x squared 
plus 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3. Therefore, I have 2x squared minus 1. So I can say g of f of x equals 2x squared minus 1. All right? So let's go and look at the ones that we have to evaluate for. Now here we have a cube root. Awesome, right? Sweet. Um, however, don't worry about these little numbers right here. We're going to use those at the end. Now, you could, you could use them at the beginning, and that would not be a problem. Um, you know, but a lot of times you want to see your work as far as you to evaluate them at the end. And we, um, you know, it works, kind of works both ways. A lot of times you can just plug them both in here. 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1, right? Then plug in there um, and you'll be able to get it. But let's go and take a look at seeing what we have here. So if I have half a g, I'm going to plug my g of x function in for f of x. So that equals the cube root of not x, but 3x plus 4, because that's my g of x function minus 1. Well, now I can get rid of my parentheses. Actually, never mind. This one's not going to... Right, okay. So therefore, I have equals cube root of 3x plus 3. Now, I want to evaluate for my 2. So I'm going to say, oh, this isn't of x, though. This is of 2. So now I'm going to plug in my 2. So I say cube root of 3 times 2 plus 3. 3 times uh, three times 2 is going to be 6, plus uh, 3 is going to be 9. Now, we can take the square root of... Uh, of 9, but we cannot take the cube root. So therefore, this is the most simplified answer that we'll have. Hey, Gvex. Yeah. Okay. So now, what I'd like to do is now let's do the f of g of x. So what happens if I plug in my f function into my g of x function? So now what I'll have is my f of x function into my g of function. So I'm going to have 3 times the cube root of x minus 1 plus 4. Well, I need to see now, I can't really simplify this any further. So I can go ahead and evaluate it for 8. So I have 3 times 8 minus 7 plus 4. Again, this is going to uh, 8, minus, 8 minus 1. 8 minus 1 is going to give me 7. So I have 3 cube root of 7 plus 4. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, our answers really didn't produce um, what we really wanted. We, you know, we, produce, we got two answers that have you know, the cube root of 9 and the cube root of 7, which you, know, you can't really solve for. Um, but, I, uh, but what you'll be able to, um, what you'll see by there is actually, I think I wanted my 8 to go in for there and my 2 to come over here. Um, when I look at it, and yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Let's actually do that. Sorry, I'm just going to mix that up because this isn't what I want. I didn't do anything wrong, but I don't like these answers. Right? It's like a book. A book always, oh, if we get like a rational number, you're like, oh, it's wrong. Well, it's not wrong, but um, I like, let's work with something that's a little bit easier. So again, let's just plug it in. All right, and then I'll plug 8 in for here. I can't simplify away. Plug 8 in. Uh, that's 3x plus 4, right? 8 in, and then I'm going to be, what, adding 3? So therefore, I have the cube root. 
3 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Therefore, I can take the cube root of this number, it's going to give me 3. So I can say f of g of 3 ends up actually equaling me back 3. Let's do this problem. If I plug in 2, f of x, so I'll have um, 3 times the cube root of, uh, let's see here, 2 minus 1. Well, yeah. 2 minus 1. Uh, let's just do it what I said. x minus 1, and then plus 4. Well, if I plug in, I can't simplify this any further, so now I'm just going to plug in 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. So I have 3 times 1 plus 4. 3 times 1, final answer, equals 7. So I can say g of f of 2 equals 7. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is give you some answers now. Oh, of course I want to give you some answers. I want to give you uh, one problem. I want to see, actually two problems. I want to see if you can solve them. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and uh, solve them for you, see how you do. So write these down. What I'd like you to do is find the f of x or f of g of x and the g of f of f of x for both these functions. Okay, here we go. So um, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to plug it in for my other function. So I have the cube root. Let's do, I'm sorry, let's do f of g of x. So therefore I plug it in, I have the cube root. Instead of x, I'm going to tap x squared plus 1. There we go. Equals the cube root of x cubed. Uh, and that cancels out to 0. The cube root of x cubed equals x. When I do my g of f of x, what I have is, um, so I now take the cube root of x minus 1 cubed plus 1. Well, the cube root of and cubed is going to give you, leave you that. x minus 1 plus 1 leaves you x. So therefore, my answer equals x for both terms. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if that will come back to us. Here, I'm just going to plug, uh, oh, that was, yeah, I wrote that fine. f of g of x equals my g function into my f of x function. So I write 3, not times x, but 5 minus x, plus 4. 3 times 5 is 15, minus 3x, plus 4. 19 minus 3x. To find my g of x function, I plug my f of x function in for my g of x. So therefore, what I'll have is um, f of x function, so I have 5, minus 3x plus 4. Distribute my negative sign. Combine my like terms. So that my g of f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that uh, tutorial helped you out. Ooh, better.